Deputy Morrow from ESUA, and I'm coming to you virtually to hopefully get you started using Google Drive a little bit more efficiently and effectively, perhaps, or maybe just your first experience with what Google Drive can do for you professionally in your work. Although I can't be there in person today, I wanted to take a few minutes to record my screen and talk to you about some ideas. I will also try to build in some places to pause and actually physically pause the video and then try these things out on your own Google Drive account. So let's get started. Right now I'm visited I'm visiting google.com and where I see the typical search engine and I am already signed in to my Google Drive account. Even if I am signed in or not signed in, I typically encourage starting with your home base as being drive.google.com. So if you just type that in your URL, drive.google.com and navigate to your Google Drive, that's one way to get there. Alternatively, as long as you're signed in, and I know that I'm signed in because of the icon in the upper right hand corner there that shows my, my name, my profile picture, and my account. But another way to get to my drive is to use this set of navigation buttons which launches most of the Google Apps and even more down below. And you'll notice that Drive is indeed one of these shortcut icons underneath the nine little squares. So that would take me to drive.google.com as well. Now if you're not signed in and you enter in drive.google.com, then it will prompt you to sign into a Google account. Or if you're already signed into a Google account other than your Google Apps for Education account, you might want to check in that upper right hand corner and make sure that you can switch between uh, the correct accounts to access the drive in which you wish to uh, which you wish to utilize at school. Um, you'll notice here that I can actually add alternate Google accounts within my same browser so that I can switch back and forth between them. Um, this is easy to do. It's just a matter of putting your password and your username, your email, uh, Gmail address in, and then it stores them in that drop down so that I could easily switch to a different Google Drive um, if need be. This is the one that I want. This is my Google Apps for Education at ESU8. And so this is the one that I'll be demonstrating with today. Once again, once you have visited drive.google.com, this is your home base as far as accessing all of your Google Docs, sharing files, organizing files, um, and then of course accessing other Google Apps as well from that um, easy to access menu button in the upper right hand corner. Um, you can also change your settings underneath of this gear shift wheel right underneath your profile picture. There's settings for Drive there. And one thing that I just want to mention, but don't encourage you to do if you're just starting out necessarily, is that you can download the Drive app to your hard drive, so to your Mac or PC computer, and then install it locally on your machine. It will sync files back and forth, although it's not instant like accessing it online like we are here. Um, but it is a nice feature for when you are offline and you want to access something in your Google Drive. Um, many people like to do that and then just use their Finder window to um, show anything in their Google Drive account on the sidebar. So again, it's just another way to look at the same files that are either online or offline or synced between both. So today we're just going to focus on the cloud version, the in the cloud or online version of our Google Drive. We know we're signed in to the right account. We know that we have access. This is our home base. And we're going to start navigating through the main menu in just a second. But I'm going to ask you to do your first pause and on your devices, navigate to drive.google.com. Make sure you're signed in to your correct school-based Google account and then see if there's anything underneath of the settings that you would like to change or take a look at. Or if you're comfortable with those, just practice switching between apps. I'll give you a few minutes to try that now.
All right, hopefully everyone is comfortable and settled in to their drive online on the web in their browser. Uh, we're going to just do a quick overview now of the navigation of this space. Um, what you'll notice on the left hand side is my main menu and most of these options or I'm sorry the first one the my drive folder does have a drop down menu that will um, delineate even further all of the folders that are inside of my drive. Now you'll notice that these folders, which I can name and organize however I wish, they are similar to the folders showing in the main menu here. Um, it's just different views and how you look at it. So right now I am viewing my list in the order of last modified. But if I just click on the name column, it'll alphabetize those same folders in my drive in either reverse or forward alphabetical order. I think I should do it this way, there we go. And therefore it will match exactly with the sidebar when I maximize that top level folder. You'll see that the folder names are the same. So you can look at your folders in alphabetical order here on the sidebar or you can sort them by when they were last modified. Last modified by yourself, or last opened by yourself, or last modified by anyone. So there's different views of those folders. When you scroll down below the folders, and I apologize for lots of folders, I am not going to admit to having the best organizational practices. Um, keeping your Google Drive organized is an ongoing challenge and skill that takes a lot of, of work, to be honest. Um, and so I am by no means a perfect example of what to do, maybe some somewhat of what not to do. But what you will notice is that down below those folders starts the list of docs. And these again right now are currently in alphabetical order, but what might make more sense is to sort these by the date that they were last opened, so that when I scroll down below the folders, I'll get my most recently used documents at the top. Okay, now this is the same as going to this recent tab on the side. Again, it's just another view of the same files sorted in a different way. So you can see earlier this week, what was opened or accessed earlier this month, and so on and so forth. Um, one, so one way of viewing my Google Drive files is the shared with me tab. If I know that I didn't initiate the Google Doc, the document, the folder, whatever, if someone else did and then shared it with me, I would definitely use this filter or this way to sort through all of my Google Drive files and just find the ones that someone else is the actual owner of. And that would help me um, eliminate all of the hundreds of files that I've started myself and just look at the ones people have sent me. When people send you a file on Google Drive, most likely they choose to send you an email notification as well. They don't have to, but most often they do. So you might get an email invitation in your inbox. However, that invitation is just basically an alert. If they've shared it with you for any reason, it will show up in your shared with me section of Drive. So you can easily find the file even if you lost the email. That's a common misconception that I have to have that original email to click on the file someone shared with me. And it's not the case. Another view for looking at your Google Drive is to do it instead of a list as a grid. Um, that's this button of four squares over on the top right of your screen. When you look at it in that way, it's more like tiles. Some people like this view. Um, some people would rather have a linear kind of organized outline. You'll notice that just like the other view, the folders are first. And then down below them are the actual individual files. And there also is different icons showing different file types. So you can see this is a form, this is a doc, this is a map, etc. If you like one way over another, feel free to customize your drive so that it 
looks the way that makes the most sense to you. And for that reason, I'd like to have you pause this video right now and spend a few minutes exploring and experimenting with the different views, both the My Drive and the collapsed and expanded folders on the sidebar, the Shared With Me filter, the Recent Documents filter, and then, of course, back to my drive and looking at them in grid view. I know that if you don't have any documents right now in your Google Drive, that this won't show you many differences. But for those of you who do have documents that have been shared with you already or are sitting there waiting for you to access, um, I would like you to take a few minutes to experiment with how to view them now. All right, so let's get started with the good stuff, how to build content in our Google Drive folder. We're gonna start with this big blue new button in the upper left-hand corner. And when we do so, we see that our options are to start a new folder, a new file upload, a new folder upload, a new Google Doc, Google Sheets, Google Slides, Google Forms, Google Drawings, Google Maps, Google Sites, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Some of these other apps are additional ones that I've connected to my Google Drive, so you may not have all of those choices, but you definitely will have this first set of the menu and a, and a couple of others, and these are the ones that we're gonna look at right now. We're gonna start with a new folder. To organize your drive best, it is helpful to create folders. And think of these as you would folders on your hard drive, folders in your actual file cabinet, or whatever it may be. Um, you might consider the different subjects that you teach or classes that you teach as each having its own folder. You might have different folders for um, purposes for professional um, interests or particular documents that you frequently get from an administrator, you might have a folder for that. Um, you could have folders for different file types if you wish, but your file structure is completely up to you. One helpful tip that I found is to start your folders with the year that applies to it. Um, you could potentially do one folder to showcase the entire school year. So for example, I could do a new folder here called 2016 through 17 as being the that school year. And then within that folder, so once I've created it, it is now showing in my list of folders, but I might go inside of it where there is no documents right now, it's completely empty, and I could make another folder inside of that. So this might be my English folder, and then I might create another folder for social studies. I'm thinking that as a student, this might be helpful um, because you're gonna have different classes that you take each year. So regardless of how you decide to, file, to start your file structure and set up your folders, notice that what we call this up here is called the breadcrumbs. It shows you the path of what you've created. So we started in my drive, that's the very top level. And then we made a folder for 2016-2017 school year. And inside of that folder, we maybe opened up our social studies folder. So the breadcrumbs show our path and how we got to where we are, or more importantly, how we might get back. So you can see if a folder is going inside of a folder or whatnot. Now we can easily drag and drop files into this space and they will be filed appropriately. Another way to do it is if you're at the main My Drive menu and we scroll down and we have a list of recent documents here, we can open up our sidebar and show our uh, various subfolders there. Here's the 2016-17 school year. Here's my English and social studies subfolders. And I can actually drag and drop files to go into those from the main window here into these folders like this. So you can organize documents after the fact. I'm trying to think of, there's lots of files here that I know that I don't really need. And so we'll just practice putting those into folders, okay? Um, if dragging and dropping isn't for you, or even more importantly, if you haven't yet created those files, then I highly recommend that you navigate to the folder on Drive first before you create the document. 
For example, if I'm going to put a new document in my social studies folder, I would go to my 2016-17 school year folder, go inside of that to my social studies folder, and from here, click the new Google Docs or file upload um, option, and it automatically creates this untitled document within the folder that I was currently at. So I'm just going to call this document my first Google Doc. Here we go, my first Google Doc. And if I click up in the title area where it says Untitled Document, it should know to uh, hopefully name my document that same name. Or even a better practice might be just to type it in yourself. Whoops. There we go. So our document is named and I have a little bit of typing on it. Google Docs instantly saves automatically. You don't have to worry about clicking save anywhere. So I'm just going to exit out. And I want to show you that it instantly appeared in my social studies folder. Um, I can use my breadcrumbs to follow my path back to my drive and see that indeed it's filed in the right place. Um, if I go into my sidebar and go to my recent documents, my first Google Doc should be at the top of the list. Let's see, there it is. And if I click on it um, and open it up, it will indeed be the correct document. And if I click on it one time and look down below, it shows me where it's filed and stored. If I change my mind and want that somewhere else, I can drag and drop it into a different folder. So now it's in my English folder and that path will, will change automatically um, down below here at the bottom of your screen to show that it is now in the English folder um, via the breadcrumbs as well too. All right, so we want you to practice this. Um, I would like you to make two or three at least folders. So you just wanna make sure that you start at the high level of my drive and you access that big blue new button and you say new folder. You can make as many as you want. You can make or nest folders inside of folders if you want. Just pay attention to your breadcrumbs and know where you are and think ahead to what you would want your organizational structure to be, to be the most beneficial to you. You can hit pause now and make a few folders. All right, I want to briefly explain what it means to upload files to Google Drive. So again, by using the new button, one of the options is file upload and folder upload. Now this is helpful if you're going to bring in a Word document or a PDF or something from another source, another file type on your computer, and you want to save it in Google Drive. So it's accessible anywhere that's connected to the internet. You can, you can open it up on any machine um, and you can potentially share it with people as well in your unlimited drive space. The one thing that I want you to know is that when you upload a Word document, for example, it kind of retains its value as a Word document. Um, whereas if you started it as a Google Doc, it would have that Google Doc feel and the Google Doc toolbar and buttons and capabilities. Um, but if you open it as a Word document, it'll look something like this. So I'm gonna scroll down and show you one that has just been uploaded as a Word document compared to one that would be a um, Google Doc document. Same content, two different formats. This one started as a Word document, so you'll notice that it's almost like a preview of it. Okay, I can't click on it and type on it and edit it. I can say open with another third-party app or I can download it to my computer, taking it off of the internet or bringing it offline so I can open it in Word. But if I do it in a Google Doc, same content, now it's editable, shareable. There we go. And I can change things around. So that's a decision you'll want to make. A lot of people like to take the content that exists already on their computers and file it away in Google Drive. 
But if you're constantly having to re-download those documents, you might consider the next time you start a new document, starting it as a Google Doc so it just lives natively within Google Drive. So if you do, though, however, want to um, put in some of your files on your computer into Google Drive, maybe for safekeepings, consider uploading an entire folder. This is a great way to share documents with the whole staff or your whole department. You can start a curriculum folder where you all share resources, um, put all the documents in there, even offline, and then go to folder upload and upload an entire folder at one shot. Or maybe it's a folder of images or a folder of anything, and you can bring that whole folder in at once. Um, once you have the folder in your Google Drive then, it's a folder like all of these. It just lives at that top level. It'll show up in your sidebar or show up in your main window. And you'll notice there's a different icon on some of these. Some of these have a, a head, a human head, and some don't. That means these have been shared with other people, the ones with the human head, whereas this one is just my own personal folder. So that's a great visual. And if you do upload a folder that you want to share with your team, it's as easy as clicking on it one time and then clicking the plus up here in the top middle of your screen and then inviting people who also through their Google Drive account uh, will have access. They'll see it over here in their sidebar. They'll see it in their list of folders. You do have to invite them with their Google Drive account, but then they will get... Um, an email invitation and an alert that they're being invited to share that folder with you. Um, another option is just the shareable link. Um, that might be beneficial for um, sending to your students, for example. You could just turn that on and rather than typing in all of your students' email addresses, you get this, this link that you can copy and maybe send out to your students or post on the board, and then they can access that. It's still a shared folder, it's just not shared with anyone in particular. Well, I'm going to turn that off now, but I just wanted to show you that that is a possibility, and it's a great collaboration tool when you're working within a school system, because there's oftentimes many documents that are beneficial to more than just yourself. So use the folder upload, potentially, the folder sharing, and um, definitely invite others to have access to your folders um, just as well as your documents. Okay, so let's take a look now at just a few quick basics with the doc themselves, the docs themselves, um, each of these being pretty much the same, whether you do a new doc, a new sheet, a new slides, a new form, drawings, etc. Um, I know that we already created a new Google Doc, but let's just do it again. We just start with that new blank document. It's untitled. We can type on it. We can use tools such as voice typing, which as long as I'm in the Chrome browser, I can go to the tools menu and access voice typing. Uh, my internet's a little bit slow right now where I'm recording, so that's not becoming active immediately, but it will be on yours. Um, and then you can just dictate your notes and your ideas into your document. There we go. Now it's active, so I'll come down here and try to click on it. I'll click this to speak. And now Google Docs should pick up everything that I say and type it mostly accurately, period. You won't even have to keyboard if you get fairly good at voice dictation, period. Pretty darn good. I'm in a quiet room. Um, just great at getting those initial thoughts down on paper, perhaps. Let's put a title on this document. My second Google Doc. And again, if I click up here where it says Untitled Document, it should auto-generate that name to match whatever is at the top of my document. If you aren't in the habit of naming things right away, hopefully Google Docs will do that for you. Um, another thing that I like when I'm creating Google Docs is to be able to insert an image without having to go search for an image. Here, I can just do it within Google Docs. And the images that it searches for are... Um, copyright friendly. They're labeled for commercial reuse with modifications. So the rights already exist 
to be able to utilize those and share them online. Um, and you can see the source of each of these pictures down here. This one's from Wikipedia. This one's from Pixabay. Now Pixabay I know is a site where all of the images available on it um, are CC0 license, which means I don't even have to give the attribution. I don't even have to list the credit unless I really want to. So I'm gonna definitely go with that one. Add it to my Google Doc, resize it a bit, and go and continue it to build this document. The real power in Google Docs and the real reason why you want Google Drive, besides the backup of your files accessible from anywhere, is definitely with the blue share button in the upper right hand corner. This is where you can send it to a colleague or just give somebody access like your administrator um, or someone else to either view it or edit it or anything in between. So if I invite, um, I'll invite myself with a different Gmail address here. Here are my choices for what that other version of myself, that other Google account can do. They can edit it, which means that they can literally type on it and change my words and add to it. They can comment, which means they just insert comments and then notes pop up on the side saying, Katie Morrow made a comment on your Google Doc. Or they can simply just view it and use it as a locked resource that they can read and reference, but not change at all. Um, in the same way, you can get a shareable link, which would be similar to what we talked about with the shared folders. Um, this has different levels of access. The first three levels are just within your Google domain, um, but you can definitely click the more and go on beyond your domain and say, anyone on the web can search and find this document, or anyone who I send the link to can view it. This is just viewing right now. I'm just saying they can view it. So if I do it like this and I hit save and I copy that link, I've essentially just published a web page. I put my, um, and I'll even take out my name here. I just made the link something that anyone can view and I copied it and I hit done. And now if anyone has that link and they put it in there, they see this web page. They see this picture and these words around it. And um, it's just an online web page. So let's see where this my second Google Doc ended up back here in my drive. I'm gonna again sort by my recently accessed files. All right, so in my recent files, at the top of my list of docs is my second Google Doc, along with these that I just accessed a little bit ago to show you, and then my first Google Doc underneath of it. So it's just a reverse order in how I've, I've looked at my Google Docs. Um, notice if I click on this one time and look at the path down below here, it's not filed in any folder. I was not inside of a folder when I clicked the new Google Doc button, so it just lives at the top level of my drive. So here's where I would have to drag it into a folder if I did want to organize it. Um, I'd like to have you pause one more time right now and start a new Google Doc of your own. I don't care what you put on it, make it appropriate, <laughs> obviously, but then if you would please share it. Um, by clicking the blue share button in the upper right hand corner and add in a neighbor's Google address. Find one from your neighbor or make it a publicly shareable link so that you can test it out on someone else's computer um, and play around with where those additional sharing options are as far as whether or not they can edit, comment, or just view. Um, and then have um, the person that you shared it with go to their shared with me section of their Google Drive and see if it truly is in there. So again, you're going to hit pause in a second. You're going to start your own Google Doc. You're going to share it with a neighbor and then you're going to have your neighbor check in the shared with me section of their Drive sidebar and see if they can access it with the same rights that you allowed them. Here's your final task. Go ahead and try it now. All right, I hope today has been helpful. Um, I realize that some of you may be fairly comfortable or more comfortable than that with Google Drive, and that's great. You guys are great internal resources for each other. I'm also gonna share this one URL with your tech leaders. Um, it's from the Google Suite Learning Center, and it's very nice to scroll through or even scroll on the top here and view these different categories of 
how to learn about what Google Drive can do. Um, they'll definitely cover some things that I didn't today and um, maybe go in depth with some more tricks or ways to um, access and utilize your Google Drive folder. So that's about the desktop sync. This is uploading files, syncing and access, different ways to access your Google Drive offline, um, preview and download files, different ways to open and update them. Deleting them I didn't talk about, but very simple. If you have a document that you are um, willing to delete, click on it one time and then choose the trash can um, from up here in your menu bar and it will give you a um, adequate warning and then it's actually saved in this trash folder so it's not instantly gone if you do change your mind. All right, let's see what else this helpful document recommends. Organizing and searching them. Um, creating folders. We did do that. We moved files to folders. You know, you can star important folders. A lot of additional features might be accessible underneath the right click or control click menu. So if you um, click on right click that file or folder, then one of the options is to add a star. Then you can filter or sort all of your drive files by the ones that you have just starred to. Um, I know that I didn't say this, and it's definitely worth saying, that Google was initially, before it was ever Drive, it was a search engine. That's what it was initially known for and started out with. So the search within Google Drive is pretty powerful. I can put in any part of any file name. Um, for example, I might put something like tech integration here. And I can get lots of suggestions of word matches within my Google Drive and lots of different file types. I can also, when I click on that search in my Google Drive, search for just specific file types. So just PDFs that I've stored in Drive or just spreadsheets, example, or for example. So um, I do, even though I, I don't have the best organizational skills, I do have a real strong affinity to that search bar and um, try to practice naming things that I'll remember what to search for later on because um, it does a really nice job and does help me find things and um, make it more accessible in the future. Again, let's go back to this tip sheet and see if there's anything else we missed. Sharing files and setting access levels. We did mention that within a document. And the edit, comment, and view. View drive activity. This is kind of like an activity feed saying what you did last. Um, how to collaborate and add authors what to use different Google Drive documents for, or different file types for, and there's even some more training. This is just one site. There's a lot of additional help online. As a matter of fact, probably the best place to go, um, besides asking your ESU8 um, colleagues to help you with a question, is just to, to Google it. Google your question about Google Drive and see what comes up for um, support help online. Um, but best of luck, you guys, having Google Apps in place at your district is definitely a worthwhile use of your time. Um, you can find lots of uses every day to save you time, to make you more productive and efficient and just more collaborative um, as a faculty together. And I do encourage you, if you ever have any questions, to reach out to us. We'd be glad to help. Thanks so much.